This video is a plea for you to help stop the execution of Troy Davis by the state of Georgia next Wednesday, September 21st. For a detailed background on Troy's case, please see my earlier video, a link to which is posted below. Suffice it to say here that Troy Davis was convicted of murder in 1991. Since that time, seven of nine police witnesses have recanted their testimony against him. One of the, the two remaining witnesses is the primary alternative suspect in the case. There is no physical evidence that links Troy with the crime. Troy's execution is not inevitable. There remains the opportunity for the Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles to commute his sentence to life in prison. I have posted a link below to an Amnesty International blog, which directs readers to a variety of actions they can take to intervene on Troy's behalf. I encourage people who need no more persuasion to do so now. I would like to take the opportunity to try to convince people who support the death penalty why this is a matter worthy of their attention and why they should act in the interest of justice to stop Troy's execution. I'll do this by posing and answering what I imagine to be questions that they might have. Question number one, wasn't Troy convicted in a fair trial? The plea for clemency for Troy doesn't hinge on any claim of his not having been, not having received a fair trial. He was found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt according to the evidence and witness testimony presented at that time. Question two, was the appeal of Troy's case flawed in some way? The appeal of Troy's case, ran, of Troy's conviction ran the usual course, but it was not designed to incorporate the recantations of witness testimony. By the time all was said and done, almost 20 years later, the burden had shifted and Troy was called on to prove his innocence, a standard that would have been unthinkable in the original trial. Question three, well, hasn't due process run its course in this case? We need to remember that clemency is an essential part of due process in this country. If it weren't, why would each and every state establish a body equivalent to the Georgia Board of Pardon and Pardons and Paroles? These review mechanisms exist exactly for situations such as this, in which the machinery of legal justice grinds blindly forward, indifferent to important and unanticipated realities, such as the possibility of genuine innocence. Question four, executions happen all the time. What difference will my signature on a petition make in Troy's case? Sadly, it is true, execution has become commonplace in the United States. Having written dozens of letters myself asking for clemency on behalf of death row inmates, I have come close to losing hope of being able to influence the outcomes of these kinds of proceedings. That said, Troy's situation is different because there is a strong case to be made for his innocence. People of goodwill, and I include in this number members of the Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles, may recognize that a miscarriage of justice is about to take place and decide to avert it. Question five, do you believe that Troy Davis is innocent? I believe that Troy Davis is likely innocent, but more importantly, I believe that the uncertainty about this case cries out for his sentence to be commuted to life in prison so that the state would not run the, risk, the genuine risk of having innocent blood on its hands. Even if I were a supporter of capital punishment, I would be working to stop Troy's execution. I'll close on that note and say, as I often do, we are all in this together. This time I want to emphasize that regardless of our stance on the death penalty, we are all in this together with respect to seeing the true cause of justice served in the case of Troy Davis. Thank you.